this video, I'm going to show you some brief tips and tricks as far as working with our starter formulas. However, what I wanted to also do was kind of show how and where you can get additional data that if you wanted to practice with these. That's probably one of the most difficult elements of starting out with Excel is, well, where can I get practice data? I'm not doing research. I need to find data that, you know, would be more real world oriented. For today's demo, I'm actually pulling from data.gov. This is uh, an open data resource uh, hosted by the US government where if you actually navigate on the page up to data, it will actually give us a whole entire list of different data sets here. So a couple of things to also point out here in case uh, you do decide to play around with this. When you're working in Excel, probably the biggest thing you want to pay attention to is at the bottom here. These are the different file types that the data can be can come formatted in. A CSV is a general spreadsheet document that can be imported into multiple types of software packages. This can be imported into the LibreOffice version of Excel, Microsoft Excel. This can be imported into SPSS, a statistical type of software package, uh, SAS, which is another one. So to start out, really focus in on the CSV file. So when you download it, you should down at the bottom here, at least since I'm working in Chrome, you can still see the Excel icon there. Now, I cleaned this up a little bit, but just to show you, this is where, as far as Excel goes and having that background as far as interface and data organization and visualization kind of comes into play here. As you can see right now, we are just dealing with a lot of numbers right now. You can see, and also not a lot of formatting. You can see the different elements going across the top here as far as the median, uh, which is your average, your middle point, and so on and so forth. So maybe they wanna know more about the averages as far as the data is concerned. So for this demonstration, I actually went through, I cleaned the data a little bit for the demo, not concerned about the ethnicity. What I did was I kept the grades for 06, 07, 08, and 09. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna change over mean to average scale score. And, it's, and I removed the percentages and I kept the level values as far as the combinations here. So to start into talking a little bit about formulas and how you can work with this. Yes, if it helps you, you could come in, we could actually do a little bit of formatting here where maybe I bold and maybe give a little bit of a background color here just so I can see my organization here. And maybe even come through here and maybe like for the all here, we make that a yellow so it stands out. When you're ready to work with formulas, at least for this demo here, we're gonna start out with the basics. If you go to the formula tab in Microsoft Excel, you have several categories as far as your overall formula and function library. So for instance here, the most basic and probably the most common you're going to use is something like auto sum. Now, you can either just click on the auto sum button and notice how it's making the assumption for you that I want to take the overall sum of the grades and combine them. At this point, I can just say enter and I could come back up and bold the data. So in total in 2006 for grades three through eight, we tested 58,225 students. Now, you click on the arrow dropdown for the formula though. You do have some more common items here as far as counting numbers, the average, maximum value, and minimum value, which the textbook does go into. So let's say for the scores now, I'm saying, okay, I actually want to figure out as far as what the average score across grades three through eight were. So once again, you could just click in the area where you want the formula to do the calculations 
click on the drop down and choose. In our case this time, we want to switch from sum, we want to do an average of the scale scores. This is also a great way too, as far as using the drop downs, you can see what the actual formula is here. Most formulas in Excel, you're going to start with an equal sign. So if I go ahead and say enter, and then I'll bold my data value, we can see here we have a value of 686.3. Now, this is actually something here that as far as the overall average scores, I can go back and start to compare here as far as looking, you know, if I look at grades three through five, they're actually above the overall average for these grades. However, when I start to get into grades six, seven, and eight, you see how they actually, the value drops below the average. So that can say to me there, okay, there's something occurring in grades six through eight, if I'm looking at this from a statistical and research standpoint, something is going on here once students get into grades six through eight as far as their math test results. Either they're not getting the concepts or that not enough time is being spent on the different level concepts. And with the level numbers now, I could actually go through and determine the averages to actually see where the problems are. So again, for instance, you could just do your drop down or I could actually start typing here equal. And if I start to type out average, you'll actually get a drop down that will let you start typing there. So if, or had a little mistake there, if I start typing average and hit tab, now I need to tell it what number. So I would wanna tell it in this case, this is E2 the colon symbol down to E7, close the parenthesis and hit enter. Once again, can come in and bold that value there. And now what I'm seeing here is a little bit of a better picture. Okay, so as far as level one goes, once again, we're seeing a little bit as far as above average in grades six through eight, but as far as the overall grade scores, as far as taking a total here, three, four, and five. So that could explain things like, okay, you know, they're working at lower level math items. They're working with, uh, you know, when you get into grades six, seven, eight, as far as the level one val uh, concepts are concerned, I'm, you know, the students are actually covering those and so on and so forth. One other thing to show you too, whenever you're working in Excel, is if you actually prefer to see what is actually showing in your formula tab here. Notice when I click on each of these, up in the corner here, up on my main function and formula tab here, you can actually see the output. But also, whenever you're under the formulas tab, I can actually click on show formula, where it's going to spread it out a little bit, but you can see here, you see how instead of seeing the end result, it's showing me the actual formula instead. This is really great that if you, for instance, are being given an Excel spreadsheet and you're not sure what cells have what information in them, are they actual hard values or are they running a formula? Knowing about this show formula button, it can make a quick scan over a lot easier. So that's just a short, quick video on showing you where you could get additional data if you wanted to practice with things and get some real world data, and also just giving you a brief overview to formulas and how to start integrating and using them.